We have uh, Beltran, uh, the Colombian, uh, and he comes here with uh, aspirations. Um, he's done really well in the past. He was spotted over in the races, the Tour of Utah and uh, the type of races. So, uh, you know, a good, good rider. But has he showed form over the last uh, year or two? I don't really think he has, and he has to start uh, trying to improve in that performance. Uh, so, do you want to pick somebody for today? No. All right, well, um, could you please now pick somebody? I'm not, I'll, I'll rephrase that. Um, I'm going to go for... Um, I am going to go for Zeppel Vader from Breton Sesh in Mental. Although, uh, um, well, no, I'm not going to qualify. That's who I'm going to go for today. OK, I, I would think that maybe Lamprey with a Juricek would be a good shout. He rode well in this uh, climb last year. But it does look as if, um, you know, Kaharua with Balbao, um, Astana really riding for uh, Lopez, the uh, small Colombian in their team. And also, uh, just don't count the uh, Colombians, Avia and uh, Milano. So it's anybody's guess. Coming into this race, it's a question mark over many of the riders' form. So uh, we just have to kind of wait and see. As we get further up the climb, we've been for a few surprises. Because when we looked at it last year, you know, Taramari was uh, a good shout, but maybe we never thought that maybe Adam Yates would have been there and he went on to win this race. So he kind of rode himself in and he was there and thereabouts. So, um, Sepo Veda is a very good shout, um, but it uh, could be anywhere from the uh, Croatian in the Lamprey Colours, uh, Juricic. Sepo Veda, the Argentine, just 23 years of age, and they're starting to kick it right now, as you can see. Uh, this is uh, a good push by uh, Louis Masbonnet. I uh, don't think he's working for himself today, uh, but CCC Sprandi, as we said, um, also here, and we've got Astana just thinking about uh, kicking on right now. It's when you go for the attack, and we remind you that last year, I think the top... Uh, six or seven were separated by over a minute and so it really does thin down late on who's got the legs to actually go long well this is what we're talking about Carrollton uh, you do get to the bottom of this climb if you do have good legs it looks as if Mas Bonnet the uh, beauty sprint Salita at the uh, start of today's stage in fact he uh, never scored any points, but he will keep that jersey into tomorrow's stage, so he is the leader of that competition. So he will be on the podium at the end of today. If you do have good legs, you tend to go on the attack early on in this climb. It does level a bit in the middle, and uh, that's where the kind of wind starts to hit you, and uh, you can lose a lot, lot of energy for the final three kilometres. Uh, the greenery does start to disappear, albeit very late on. Uh, there are some rather spectacular views. It's a, it's a bit of a weird landscape that they're heading towards, a bit like a moonscape. Um, don't think Von 2, that's sort of like Mars, isn't it? Uh, but uh, yeah, plenty of rocks up here. Are there rocks on the moon or just dust? Not sure. Uh, 8.7 kilometers. <laughs> He's smiling down upon us right now, I'm sure. Um, time then just to get your head sorted out. How do you approach this one, Brian, if you find yourself on, it, on your own, for instance? Well, that's what you, are. you just have to sit in the wheels and wait for the last uh, three kilometres. Um, Mas Bonnet is, uh, you know, really going for it now. They do have other cards up their sleeves and they're trying to make this uh, difficult, but on your own, it is difficult to stay in front. There's still a long way to go at 8.5. Remember, it doesn't get really, really steep at 13% until you hit the uh, three kilometres to go. Well, that'll be in five kilometres time, and it's going to take us quite a while to get there. So some of the teams that you may not be familiar with going for general classification today, or at least not uh, used to seeing up towards the four, well, they're giving it a good go right now. Uh, it's been a, a longish stage, the longest couple of stages that we've had, to be honest, Brian. Yesterday was over 180, um, that must have hurt, but uh, this most certainly will do, even though it's shorter today. It is still impressed by uh, Andy Greipel, st still in here, yeah. hanging on the back. It just pulls over now but uh, he gets to within eight kilometers of the finish. Did you see that it starts to kind of steep in here up to another eight percent? Mas Bonnet is still leading the way behind. You can see the orange jerseys of CCC Sprandi and that's uh, the Bulgarian champion Mihailov is leading the way from uh, Schumacher and Rebelin, the third rider in the orange kit. There we are. Just showing you how much investment they put into this race with uh, some of you have been very much appreciative of the helicopter shots that we've had we were able to dispatch one or two as well and look at this um, you want a teammate have a teammate Cairo Oral the climbing has begun and uh, at least at this point 7.4 percent as you can see that's not the average over the whole run incidentally it's a little bit more than that uh, it peaks right at the very last um, at about 11 percent and that's going to feel like uh, heaven compared to some of the hellish sections that they're dealing with and Andre Greifel continues his uh, his push for, for form I guess you might say um, and doing well um, 
earlier on today, but uh, just being found out right now, which is uh, something of a surprise uh, that he's faded so early. 7.6 uh, k's to go. Yeah, Andre Grave had a good uh, run through uh, the Ardennes, of course, uh, and uh, some of the classics earlier on in this, uh, well, the, the past month or so. Uh, he's on that sort of little rest-up time right, right now, recovery time, before he goes for the Giro. So, uh, yeah, good test for him. But the test right now is for these guys. Wanty Group Gobert, who have they got for us today, Brian? Well, looking at the front of the peloton, that's uh, so, so bad, it looks like. But the, uh, the right on the right-hand side, uh, Para for uh, Kaharu Al. Just behind him in the orange, you've got uh, Rebelin uh, right up there near the uh, front of the peloton. The rider that was involved with the attacks is uh, McCarthy for uh, the uh, Tinkoff team. No reaction there, but uh, another acceleration from Para, from Kaharu Al, followed by Rebelin, who does look good following every attack that is made from the young Colombian. Uh, Para's diminutive figure, Selvaggi, absolutely enormous. He's so rangy. Um, and uh, this looks like Durasek having a think about this, just, uh, I, I guess, trying to police those who are going up the road in case they have a turn of speed and distance everybody. It's going to happen. It's just a question of when. Yeah, still 7.3 to go. The hardest part of the climb comes further up. And this is where we, uh, in about a kilometre time, we start to ease off ever so slightly and the wind will be in the rider's face. But it's uh, Rebelin and uh, Para, the Colombian for Kaharua and the green just behind. And it does look as if it's uh, Juracek of the uh, Lamprey team. Nick Wilkins, uh, we've still got time to talk to some of you on Twitter, by the way. It's at Carlton Kirby or Bry Smithy, B-R-I-S-M-I-T-H-Y. If you hashtag home recycling, it goes uh, to everybody. Um, yeah, great scenery, says Nick Wilkins. One of my favourite stages of the year. I think we could probably say that for ourselves as well Brian. yeah fantastic stage great backdrop and uh, you know a really uh, supportive crowd right at the top with uh, so many locals just enjoying the party atmosphere I'm not going to say it's going to be a party for these guys but uh, certainly at the top it is for the spectators yeah it's uh, it's time to suffer for some out there uh, Dre Pack have been uh, reasonably busy today that looked like Alan Phelan who was just uh, going backwards out of uh, the bunch which is ever diminishing as we speak and look at this, this is a proper turn of pace. Yeah, now getting involved is the uh, riders from um, Bardiani in the, the lime green. Just behind Jay McCarty, the Australian rider. This is the attack here. So Vaggie, the tall, lanky figure in the uh, in the blue, just behind. So no big reactions. You can see Lotto Sudal still have Adam Hansen in the group behind. 6.8 kilometres ago and uh, plenty of attacks. Yeah, there are. Uh, this is nice to see. Um, is it Barbin who's going for this? Um, I thought it would be uh, uh, Bataglin or Colbrelli, to be honest, but he's a good sen sentinel to have up the road, Enrico Barbin. And the uh, little guy has decided that he's going to try and bridge over to these boys. This may well be the formation of what is a um, our winning move right now. Uh, it's hard to declare it so early on, but uh, with 6.7 kilometres to go and so much punishing terrain, I guess it, uh, as we mentioned earlier, it's, it's whether you've got the legs at the bottom of the climb. Um, that counts at this point but uh, can you sustain it throughout it's a nasty series of steps it's hard to set a rhythm isn't it because of that it is uh, in the past in this climb we've seen uh, some attacks that have never really succeeded this far out because of the, uh, the steepness of the climb in the last uh, few kilometers but we do have a rebellion at the front with the uh, para from a uh, Al, and uh, just with them also is the um uh, the rider Juricek from uh, Lamprey, thinning out a uh, small peloton, or what we're going to call this a peloton, with uh, Barbin and McCarthy just behind them. Uh, good work, a lot of you, as I love this race, watch it every year, says Paul Stebbings. Uh, must come over next time. Uh, Paul, you need to make the trip, it's a beautiful part of the world. Now, somebody earlier on saying I'd mixed up mint tea with sage tea, mixing my herbs. No, it really was a sage flower, it got no mint in it, and absolutely delicious it was too. I'm going to try and buy some fresh sage flowers to take home with me if I'm allowed to bring them back uh, to the UK. Uh, 6.2 kilometres then, and it's 14 seconds, and uh, those who've reached out are now perhaps... Um, regretting they've uh, grabbed hold of something that is very very prickly i'm afraid and it is this climb we said it's hard to set a rhythm um <laughs> as the drumbeat of the local band uh, start to beat out i think they are going to parade by us so um just bear with us if we get deafened uh it's loud down the bottom of the mountain as well in terms of their legs they're doing a good job six to go brian 19 seconds now again the there is so a state of play at the moment is rebelling and a Juricek at the front, they did have Para from Kaharual. He's just been at a distance by the uh, the riders in the front. Barbin is a rider in the back in the lime green. 
uh, McCarthy is with him, the young Australian rider for Tinkoff. Then we have the uh, well, what's left of the uh, peloton led by Orica Green Edge, and that's Christian Meyer. So they start to weave as the road indeed itself snakes still within tree cover at this point. They will leave the arbs behind uh, the arboreal terrain and uh, the disco's coming through. So uh, uh, just forgive us for a moment. In fact, uh, it's a mobile nut seller. Uh, somebody needs to move him and his walnuts further on down the road, I'm afraid. I may send Brian out. He is reasonably scary at situations such as Could you give him a glare, Brian, please? Uh, he's doing it right. <laughs> he's doing it right now. Oh, and they're throwing goodies to the crowd. And uh, as they bounce off heads, uh, they scurry for them. Uh, it looks like they're handing out white sharks. Not quite sure about that. There are great whites in this part of the world, but uh, thankfully they've got uh, more than enough fish uh, to be troubled giving you a nibble. 5.5 uh, uh, kilometres then, Durasek and Rebelin. Uh, this is starting to liven up here, Brian, good and proper. Yeah, still 5.4 kilometres to go, striking out very early, and uh, Rebelin and uh, Durasek are leading the way. Durasek is the second of the riders at the front in the pink in the blue for Lamprey. Para was a rider who initially went on the attack. He was just a uh, distance ever so slightly, starting to uh, struggle a bit on this climb. Um, but then we have uh, a duel behind with Barbara and McCarthy. Just under five kilometres to go. 20 seconds is the gap. Doesn't sound like much, but on a climb like this, that could be a winning margin. I think you'll probably be able to throw a, uh, a, a blanket, if you like, uh, albeit a very, very large one, over the winners today. I think the top five will be separated by about um, 35 to 40 seconds by the end, and then it's really going to spin back. It's uh, a climb that in the past has been a huge test and it seems that some believe they are well and truly up to it i like the look of barbini looks nice and relaxed he is uh, both uh, himself and uh, mccarthy are just hanging in between at this uh, moment it did look as if that was um Cameron Mayer, who has been distanced from this uh, peloton. And batter Glyn Bryan as the disco rolls through once again. Uh, apologies for that. Um, this time they're, uh, they're throwing crackers. Um, <laughs> it was Enrico Bataglin who looked a bit second-hand. So Bar Bin has taken a big step forward as the chosen man. Bataglin going backwards. He would have been one of those we'd picked for today. Um, he he's, can ride over lumps. This is a bit too difficult for him. He's, he packs a good uh, sprint come the end. He's won a stage of the Giro d'Italia, uh, getting over a couple of climbs. But I think this climb is going to be a little bit too, too difficult for the likes of uh, Bataglin. But you can just see McCarthy for uh, Tinkoff and uh, Barbin for um, Bardiani. Just about to catch Para. Para, the Colombian for Carual, the uh, rider that initially went on the attack, was dropped by Rebelin and Juracek, who are... 23 seconds in front of the now. Um, Jay McCarthy looking nice and uh, feisty at the moment. He's spinning up a good cadence, as you can see. Um, he's dispatching with some of the nasty inclines that we've already had very quickly. This is a, a bit of a kick you've got going on right now, but they'll just get to the next flatter section of 3% uh, in quite short order. And then there's a long, long uh, period of about uh, what 1.8 uh, where it really does... It really does hurt, um, and then it gets very, very nasty at the end of that reach of 7%. It goes to 13 and 20% within that little, uh, uh, probably two, 300 metres. Uh, there are some nasty turns, which you will see. 3.7 kilometres only until the line. Um, McCarthy, Barbin and uh, Para are the chasers for the time being, but I think they look strong. The duo in front look strong, uh, Rebelin and um, Juracek. We've only got a thinned out uh, group here now. Two riders in there from Astana. Then you've got uh, Serge Pals also in there. Magias for uh, the uh, Novo Nordis canal of uh, the Colombia team. Adam Hansen is still there for uh, Lotto Sudal and Sepo Veda for Britain Sesh. Um, MTA Quebec are yet again managing to get themselves, uh, at least in our thoughts at the end of the day, success in the offing, do you think, today? I think experience is uh, counting here. Um, Serge Pals is has been on the attack earlier on in this climb uh, in the previous occasions and really suffered in the last few kilometres. So I think he's in this kind of sitting back, waiting uh, for the last three kilometres, but they're already 45 seconds behind, and that's wow. a lot to make up in the last few kilometres. Also in this group, 207 at the back th for the Turku third division team, and that's Marchinsky. Sepulveda was also in there, the Argentine, who was my pick for today, looking like he's uh, um, just 
uh, ever so slightly been found out, perhaps, uh, just looking at Mass Bonnet as well. And just check this out. Uh, it's as if the good Lord dropped a, a piece of cooked spaghetti on the mountaintop and uh, said, that's your road. Uh, the easiest way through, as if you could ever describe this as easy. There's one of those hairpins we were talking about. Yeah, it starts here just after three kilometres. You can see the boards now. It starts to get really tough, if it hasn't been tough already. We have got Rebelin in front in the orange for CCC Sparandi, followed with Juricek from the Alampre team. Then we've got this trio of McCarthy from Tinkoff, just heading the notes of this trio. 71 is uh, Barbin of um, Bardiani, and at the back, the initial attacker on this climb was the, the para, the young Colombian with the Kaharu Altio. They look back to the left, they'll see what remains of the peloton. In that group is uh, Cano of uh, Colombia, Hansen, Lotto Sudal, Sepulveda um, of Breton Sesh, and uh, Serge Powers of MT in Quebec. So Christian Juracek uh, starting off today, uh, level on time, one of those who just didn't get caught behind any gaps uh, despite the tumbles as this group passed the three kilometres to go marker. So only about 100, 120 uh, metres separating them all. There, uh, just a little bit further up, was Zeppel Vader that we're talking about. That's uh, number 207, Thomas Mashinsky, starting off as one of the pre-race favourites. Not going to be him today, he's fading. And as soon as you get detached from a group like that, uh, Brian, uh, the mountain eats you, doesn't it? It does. He, he went really on the attack, like uh, most of these Colombians do, and he was under a lot of pressure, got dropped, but I think he's got his second breath now, and I just noticed that in this uh, following group at uh, 54 seconds, just c coming off the uh, the back now, is Daniel Rato, and, um, you know, that's an excellent ride for him. Just in front, you see the one to Rip Gobert rider, that's Selvaggi. So it's Sepulveda, Serge Pauls, Cano. Uh, for uh, Colombia and Adam Hansen. We can just see the three riders in front, and this is where it gets really, really tough. Time to make a big pickup, and it's Adam Hansen that's just trying to uh, uh, try to cope, frankly. And on some of the uh, more testy inclines, Brian, it is about your coping cadence. Uh, you forget about following anybody, to be honest. It's just getting the job done. Oh, this is it. You have to really, uh, you know, just set your own rhythm. This is probably the hardest part of the climb now. The last few kilometres have already been climbing uh, hard, a hard tempo, and you can just see the difference. This uh, group, which was about eight or twelve riders, have just blown apart. Zeppel Fader has found a little bit of acceleration and I think now it's his moment to go for it. He's picking it up but he's uh, got the none too small matter of trying to chase these guys. McCarthy, Barbin and Para are the chasing group right now and he's just about to bridge over to them. That was a big push by Zeppel Fader. He's on the grind and he's looking like he's got something left at hand here. Yeah, he does look uh, as if he's got a bit of punch in his legs. He does have the carrot of these three riders in front, Para, McCarthy and Barbin. Barbin looks to be struggling now this is what we're saying earlier on in this climb if you waste a lot of energy and uh, you really go into the red in this part of the climb if you saved a bit it looks as if Sepulveda has you've saved that wee bit then you do have a, a bit of energy to uh, struggle over these last couple of kilometers come on Adam get yourself up this mountain uh, stay in contention uh, but the gaps are going to be huge Sepulveda bridges to that group and just goes straight by he's a very powerful and rangy character and this well the the line is within range only 2.3 kilometers away Job not finished yet, though. Yeah, Rebelin just takes a drink here for CCC Sprandy. Juricek, they have been in front for a long, long period of time. The gap is coming down 36 seconds to the group behind, now being led by Sepulveda of Britain Sesh. Rebelin, one of the pre race favourites, uh, 43 years of age, we remind you. Uh, this is a much younger man, gives away 20 years. He has 20 years to the good, I think it's fair to say. How good is he? Well, you're finding out right now. He's spinning it up very well. 35 seconds, though, is a big gap with only two Ks to go. Yeah, you got to remember that the finishing line there's absolutely no time bonuses this year so if uh, rebel whoever's crosses the line first will take that leader's jersey so it's going to be a battle between the top two of Rebelin and Juricek looking at the time gaps at this moment 34 seconds back to Sepulveda Zeppel Vader is the star turn for the time being, but has he waned already because he's left it too late? We're going to find out at the top of this mountain. Serge Powell's um, suffering for MTN Quebec. These guys are, are going for minor places and maybe uh, the right to fight on another day. This is McCarthy, Barbian and Para, as you can see. Uh, this was the group that was bridged over to by Zeppel Vader, and he's on the chase. And these are the, this is his quarry right now, this duo. Look just down the mountain and you'll see him just come into vision, will you? Not quite. I think it may well be between these two. And Rebelin badged up as a uh, hot favourite at the top of the top of the day, and indeed at the top of this race.
Nice. Looks comfortable. Come on, do some work, says Duracek, for goodness sake. I'm not going to drag you up here all on my own. Yeah, difficult, difficult finish. And to me, Rebellion looks as if he's uh, slightly in the ropes now. Duracek does look the freshest of the two. I'm still sticking with my man Duracek of uh, winning this uh, stage today. But uh, Sepulveda is coming up, but uh, not fast enough. One point up to go. You can just see Sepulveda from Breton Sessi, 32 seconds behind. Isn't enough. He did come up with some speed. Starting to suffer now. But back to the others. It's 52 seconds already. Durasek from Lampe Marina. Revelan here from CCC. Spradley Pokovici in the orange. A man of 43 years, don't forget. So if it's between these two, the money has to be on uh, Christian Durasek. We had to prize a prediction out of Brian Smith. He went for Durasek uh, some way out. I went for the man who's chasing them down, Zeppel Vader. Uh, but it looks like Zeppel Vader, as we've said, has left it a bit too late. There is a little zone of respite. He's got to refine it. He's gone white. He's thrown a whitey. His visage does, is, is almost almost as bright as uh, uh, the white rocks that great this part of the world. And he feels like he's um, uh, working on each and every one of them with only 1,400 14 hundred meters to go body language tells a tale there and he just looked behind and he looked behind to see where the uh, other riders were that means that Sepulveda has made an acceleration but he's starting to pay for it now he's think now thinking the uh, first two places have gone he's now thinking that how can I hang on to this third place how can I hang on and how can I uh, limit the damage as others uh, here little bomblets going off all over uh, this mountain and I'm afraid um, you never know quite when you're gonna go pop and para has done exactly that uh, this is a brave push by Zeppel Vedder, but he's on his own at the moment as these two guys get out of the saddle. It's going to be Revelan versus Durasek for the line. 1.1 kilometers to go. The, uh, the toughest sections have been dispatched with, but there's still a nasty old kick towards the line, isn't well, there? We're talking about kicks. This is the first kick now for uh, the uh, win of the stage, and it was Durasek that decided to go. He distanced uh, Revelin ever so slightly. Revelin using all his experience now to hang on to Durasek. Durasek does look the strongest of the two, but uh, Revelin is the most experienced. So Zebel Vega still uh, detached from these guys. I wonder whether he will be there at the end, Zebel Vega, the Argentine. He's in uh, no man's land at the moment while these two start to think about victory. And, and I guess uh, doing enough work uh, to, have, to, to be in the right place, but also uh, not burning too much so late on, Brian. It's a difficult call. It is a difficult call because it is really, really steep in the last 200 meters here. And so you have to save a little bit for that sprint. And it does look as if Juracek and Rebelline are starting to uh, play a little bit of a game and it's actually playing into the hands of Rebellion because I think if uh, Juricek just accelerated another couple of times he could in fact put some distance into Rebellion. Yeah well I've got a feeling he might well uh, engage the kick very late on. Rebellion looks like he's at the end of his resources but um, out the saddle he comes and just starts the bounce, bounce uh, nicely Contador style as you can see although a bigger man of course it'll be a huge result for him as well at the end of this career. They just look over there you can see the finish line all most temptingly close, Brian. Who's going to reach out? Yeah, and it's still probably about three minutes away. In fact, <laughs> such as it. I still sticking with the Juricek. He does look at the, uh, I say, freshness of both of them. Rebelling, using all his experience, just sitting behind. Allow Juricek to, to uh, distance himself a little bit, but uh, come back to the wheel, sitting alongside. A flick of the elbow by uh, Juricek. Looks as if they're slowing down. Rebelling doesn't want to leave this one out. He wants to just sit on the wheel and just see a kind of slight headwind at this moment in time. Juricek looking behind to see what the damage anybody is coming up behind. Sepulveda still hanging on to that third place. Serge Pals now for MTN Quebec in fourth with the others um, just falling away. 500 metres, it's going to take a long time. The man with the mask and the flag uh, could do with getting out of the way. We've had a lot of respect from the fans, incidentally, along the way today. Um, surprised that uh, Durasek didn't just try and take uh, Rebelan over to the side of the road. Uh, it's just a, a whiff of that. Camera bikes need to get out of the way as well. The last few curves right now, nobody wants to have their rhythm disturbed. And right now, they are in a whole world of pain. This is that last section that Brian was talking about that really does kick up as you go to the finish line. It's almost cruel. Now, what's going to be the back gap back to Sepulveda? Don't forget that Adam Yates really gutsy performance last year as he closed down on Tara Bay to give himself a chance of victory, which he ultimately took on the second climbing day. And this is great push by Sepulveda here. He's coming to that section. Oh, and this time Christian Duracek goes for it, but Rebelland's good, uh, good for that marker, at least for the time being. They're coming to the hoarded section. It's still not over by a long way. Not over at all, and uh, Rebelland just sitting behind. He does pack a bit of a sprint. He, he knows the last 200 metres really, really 
players up. Juricet really has to keep the pressure on. He does look as if he could be the winner of today, but he's still open here. Reveille never discount him. Well, 50-50 for the time being. Reveille out of the saddle. Is he going to find a little bit of pace? He's now looking up the road, uh, almost assassin style. It's what Chris Froome does when he's not looking at the stem. And you know that he's about to press the go, but will it be now? And indeed, how much power has he got? Cat and mouse side by side. Reveille drifts over to the right hand side of the road, picks up the pace. Uh, Duracek tries to get on his wheel. Duracek can't stay with him. Rebelan is extending his lead. He's going to take the day. Oh, clever stuff. Very, very clever stuff. Rebelan comes to the line. He's our victor. And now the count back for the gap begins. Oh, look at that. It's going to be five seconds. Who'd have believed that with 60 meters to go? And now we look for this man, Zeppel Vader. Now, has he done enough to uh, be a challenger later on? Certainly, it looks that way. Some huge gaps today and a very brave effort by this man. Brave effort. He did go on the attack with uh, about three kilometers ago when we got onto the hardest part of this climb. He was about 40 odd seconds behind. Does look as if he's made a few seconds up, but he cracked a wee bit. He got to within about 30 seconds of the uh, duo in front, never made it. And it looks to, as if in the last uh, few hundred meters he's losing absolutely more time. It's going to be oh. over 40 seconds to Sepulveda. Good enough for a podium place, a great effort. Great win by David Rebelling. Rode it well. Experience counted in the end when the, the, uh, the uh, Lamprey rider during did look as if he was the strongest in front. 48 seconds. Now, we said a minute would separate the top five. It wasn't a bad guess. Uh, there we are. We passed that marker now with 100 metres to go. Goodness me, this mountain takes prisoners, and you can see how they're rocking and rolling just trying to get to the end. That was Barbin struggling like a uh, newspaper delivery boy on a, on a testy hill. He looks under his arm, and these guys come to the line with a great deal to be proud of, but also, unfortunately, a great big gap.